Hi, I'm Adam Culp, and you're at BeachCast. I'm going to show you how to create and use GitHub packages. So stick around, and we'll get on that. Welcome back. If you've used Docker or any other type of containerized service, one of the things you may have grown accustomed to is being able to include an image in your containers dynamically. And that it is just as simple as doing a Docker run or Docker up and telling it where to find an image to pull in to make creation of the container much simpler. Now, Docker made this very easy with Docker Hub, where you were able to store images on Docker Hub. And then when you called them or when they were called directly from within a command to create a container, Docker would automatically go to Docker Hub to see if that package exists or that image existed. Now, there's a new player in that space, and that is GitHub. Now GitHub also has GitHub packages. And using GitHub packages, you can function much the same as you did still using Docker. You just have to change the address slightly as you're including the package. So let me show you how we get that done. The first thing that we need to do is create a personal access token. I'd like to take a moment to introduce the sponsor for this video, Cloudways. Cloudways allows you to focus on your business and avoid web hosting hassles. Go live in minutes by selecting your application, selecting the vendor your server should be housed with, then select the server size for your chosen provider, and you're ready. Please use the affiliate link in the description below to support the BeachCast channel and to claim your one month of free hosting. The discount code BEACHCAST will be automatically applied to your signup. So on GitHub, if I go to my... Uh, in the menu, if I go to my settings, and from my settings, if I scroll down and look for the item developer settings, click there, you'll see that there's personal access tokens as a third item in that list. Now I have a few different personal access tokens here because I like creating a different token for every use case. One for command line, one for PHP storm, one for PyCharm, whatever the case might be. So you want to create a personal access token for use with GitHub packages. Now you'll notice I already have one in the list here uh, for package management, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and create another one. So I'm going to generate new token, then we come to the new personal access token screen. Now you'll want to add in some sort of title here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a title of temporary package management. And you also want to set in an expiration date. Now I recommend that you set an expiration date of about 90 days. You can go shorter or longer as the case might be, but I would recommend that you, um, you know, keep it relatively simple. Um, I can, you can see here that the token by default expires in 30 days. That's probably not a bad idea. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to set in the permissions that are going to be needed for packages. So if I go down to this section, we see that there is write packages and read packages. Now, because I want to use this access token to create packages, I do want to be able to write packages. Read packages is selected uh, as an add-on to write packages. And then I'm going to go ahead and select delete packages as well because I want to give this access token complete control over, you know, the, the package creation process. And then I would uh, generate the token. So click and generate token, then it's going to give you the access token. In this case, it's right here. Now I'm not gonna keep this, I'm gonna delete it before this video is published. So uh, just know that it's not gonna be there. So, so with that, I can click this icon and copy it and then use that in my, in my command line as I'm going to show you in a minute. So back at the command line, I want to uh, add this to my current uh, environment so that way I can issue commands. So and how I would do that is I would type at the command line export and then do CR underscore PAT equals and then I would paste in that token. So in this case, I would paste in the token that I received from the interface and it would add it into my environment so that way I can use the command. Now with that added into my environment, then I could do something like uh, echo 
and then uh, C C R pat, and then I'm going to pipe that to Docker login and ghcr for the container repositories and then i could put in user adam culp and then uh, put in password and put s standard in now hitting enter on this would use the password that i just exported into my environment and it would do the login in Docker, and then it would answer back and tell me that the login was successful. And so that's what you'll want to do on your setup as well. And I'll make sure to include all this in the description so that way you can do it on your end. So with the permissions added into your environment, the next thing you want to do is navigate to the location where you have your image files created. Now I've got that here on my screen. If I look in this directory, I can see that I have the Docker file, I have my license, my readme.md, uh, and then I've got some other files as well that coincide with this specific image. So now that I'm in that directory, I want to build this image so then I can send it to the packages repository. So I'm going to issue the command docker build hyphen t and I'm going to put in ghcr.io. Now that's the address that's going to be used as we pull that package for use with docker and put slash and I'll put Adam Culp is my namespace. And then this app is PHP hyphen code hyphen quality. And I'm gonna tack on an extra little bit of the name and just put temp on it um, because I'm basically creating this, this package, but I've already created a package for this repository before. So I wanna have a new one with a different name so because I can have multiple packages. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that as hyphen temp. And we're gonna say it's latest and put the dot because I want it to build. I want Docker to build an image using the current working directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and click enter on that. Now Docker is going to use the files in the current directory and create a new image to put into Docker desktop in my case. Okay, so Docker has finished setting that up. If I bring up Docker desktop, we can see here that I do have that image right here. The image is, uh, starts out ghcr.io, Adam Culp namespace, and then PHP hyphen code hyphen quality hyphen temp. So that image has been created. With the image created, the next thing that remains then is to push the package to GitHub packages. So for that, I'm going to issue the command docker push and ghcr.io, Adam Culp namespace, and php hyphen code hyphen quality. And we'll do temp, and then we'll tell it latest. And now it's going to push that image, that Docker image that I just created is going to push it to GitHub packages. So it's preparing to push and is getting everything set to send it up. So if I go to my packages here on GitHub, we can see that I now have a new package, PHP hyphen code hyphen quality hyphen temp, and it's showing as private because by default, packages are created private. And if you want them to be available public, then you would need to uh, go into the package and set it up to uh, be public so people can see it publicly. From within the package, if I click into the package, we can see first it is it is private. Uh, we can also see that there are additional package settings here. Uh, we can see also the pull command is available here and it's telling you docker pull ghcr.io slash atomculp slash php code quality temp in the latest. And that's the command that you would use from Docker to pull that uh, package. If I go into the package settings, we can see that there are actions, you, so you can uh, add, rep add a repository to this package. Now, I'm not going to do that because I've already got a different package associated with that repository, so I'm not going to do that. But it is relatively easy to click this link and associate it with a repository. And then you can also uh, add a repository using code spaces. 
I can involve, uh, invite additional team members. Now, one thing that I do recommend as well is once you have this linked up to a repository, you can, there will also be a box here for uh, managing access. There'll be a checkbox for uh, linking it up to the same permissions as the repository. And that's once you've linked it up to a GitHub repository. And I'd recommend doing that. So that way, when you, any accesses that you have for your GitHub repository, just carry over to the package. And we can also change visibility here. And this is where we would change it from being private to being public and making it available for others to be able to pull the package. Additionally, from within the package, if I wanted to add a readme here, I can do that. And that is, you can do that after connecting a repository. When I connect the repository here, then the readme will automatically be pulled in for, so folks would be able to see, okay, that package now uh, here is how I can use that. As an example, if I go back to my packages and go to PHP code quality, this one is public. And if we scroll down, you can see uh, the readme is available here so folks can see how to use this package. And we can see that all the all the other uh, bits and pieces, including collaborators, um, are here, open images and everything, because now it is associated with my GitHub repository of the same name. Now, there is a site with good documentation on GitHub packages, and I'd recommend you to check that out. Um, it's uh, it's pretty full featured, includes a lot of information about GitHub packages, a lot of documentation and how to's. One of those is how to create a GitHub action to keep it updated. By default, even if you associate the package with a GitHub repo, it's not automatically going to update as you're pushing new changes to that GitHub repo. Instead, they recommend that you create a GitHub action to then update the GitHub package. I'll show you how I did mine. So if I go into PHP hyphen code quality, the, the repo, and I click into my actions, we can see that I do have an action here called uh, create and publish Docker image. And you can see that I have some previous runs here where it was updating um, the GitHub packages. By clicking into the Docker publish YML, we can see that it's pretty simple. It's just on, uh, on a push request on branch master and then on pull request to branch master, same thing. It's uh, telling the environment, which is the GitHub packages, uh, the registry, and then it's giving it the name. And it's also, uh, you know, telling it how to build. So we're doing, uh, we're saying to use Ubuntu latest, we're telling it to check out the code, and then we're, we're also telling it, you know, where to put the code. You can also find an example in the documentation, which is what I used. I just copied and pasted it and made some changes for my own repositories. But for the most part, it's pretty cut and dry and, and easy to create the GitHub action that will then update the repository anytime a push request is done or a pull request, which has been approved, is done on the GitHub repo. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful and I hope you it, it helped you get started in GitHub packages. Um, this was the first one that I've done, so I decided to create this video so I can come back to it if I need to and also to help you get started with GitHub packages. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. Hit the thumbs up button so that way other folks can find this video on YouTube as well. I really appreciate the help. Above all, be good to yourself and others, and I'll see you next time.